springtime brings a large concentration of water in a fairly short period of time down into any conveyance down to the lakes. It's a relatively closed system with one small hole in that large bathtub being the outlet structure itself. There's a weir inside that's like an accordion shape. It allows enough water to get over and maximize the, the pipe flow. Maintaining the environmental prior lake has turned into a lot bigger job than most people realize. It's a lot beyond the outlet. This is what the watershed district calls the Highway 13 wetland. This is the main input of water from the south end of the from the headwaters area into Spring Lake, and that allows us to treat water for phosphorus removal before it enters Spring Lake. I think one of our difficulties is, is carp. What we want to do is figure out how many we've got and uh, base our management decisions around that. They stir up the bottom and then it releases all this phosphorus in the low shallow portions. These middle and bottom samples, we look at dissolved phosphorus for the algae to take up. Algae bloom is created by the excess phosphorus in the lake. And uh, if we measure the phosphorus level coming into Prior Lake, it's real high. If we can uh, try to slow the, the flow of water, infiltrate into the ground and that will remove the phosphorus. Uh, we were considering replacing a new street sweeper. We approached the watershed district with a proposal. We wanted to upgrade your new technology and we asked them to help you know share in the increased cost. We uh, helped the city pay to sweep more additional times. We are going and getting state grants. We're working with the city as they reconstruct streets to put in these retrofit rain gardens. And then we're working with landowners to do improvements on their own. You hear a lot of implementation of rain gardens, which are depressions placed in the most efficient locations so the water can pond in there and slowly seep away to filter through the soils. This is a Blue Thumb uh, rain garden design class. All of these residents came um, several weeks ago to an introductory class and learned about rain gardens and native lakeshore restoration and were interested enough that they want to now put a rain garden on their property. The thing is you can do with the rain gutters. Uh, we have uh, the rain barrel that you collect the water off the downspouts of your house and then drain it off slowly. Everyone taking a note and looking at it and say, what can I do? I just run garden hoses to the different spots, take care of my waste water and the flowers. It's the Jeffers Pond Environmental Festival. The students are all throughout the whole school grounds and they'll be doing three specific tests. One, a visual erosion inspection and one uh, velocity of the outlet channel here behind us and then the uh, third one is turbidity testing. All right. Education and the education of the children. I'm a firm believer if you get them in believing what can happen because they believe in you can do a little bit and then these little bits add up. So we have educational programs with, that we sponsor or that help support with the school, send kids to environmental camps and so forth. We're starting to see the payback on that. You know, you get the kids interested in keeping it clean, their parents get interested in keeping it clean. I think this is one of the greatest places to raise kids. I was fortunate raising seven kids in here, and I, I always tell them it's the water. <laughs>